After five years of engineering school and six internships, I started my first full-time mechanical design engineering job back in November. So in this video, I'll share with you the resume and portfolio that helped me get the job interview and eventually the job offer. My resume was only one page long and it had four sections, experience, skills, projects, and education. I broke it down into two columns just because I thought it looked better. But there really is no need to do that. A one column resume works just as well as long as the content of your resume is good. So don't stress too much about the layout of your resume. Starting off with the experience section, I have my experience listed from most recent to oldest. One piece of feedback that I got from recruiters that have looked at my resume was, why are my work experiences so short? Am I working for companies for four months and then job hopping? I'd respond by saying that these roles were all internship roles and were meant to be this short. So although I thought it was obvious that these were all internships, because if you go down, you'll see that in my education section, I'm in school from 2016 to 2021. They probably skimmed through my resume really, really quickly and didn't get a chance to really see how long I was in school for and when I was in school. So just adding the word intern or co-op after each job title will probably help them in avoiding that kind of confusion. There may have been recruiters that looked at my resume and at first glance immediately ignored me because they thought I was job hopping. I think if you're applying to an internship, then it's safe to assume that the recruiter looking at your resume will assume your previous experiences have all been internships. But if you're applying to a full-time role, it's important to mention that the experience you have on your resume is an internship experience. Moving on, for each experience, I include the company name, job title, location, and job duration. Then I'll include three to five bullet points for each experience that describes what I did, how I did it, and the results of what I did to the best of my ability. To decide what bullet points I should include on my resume, to make sure I mention all the experience that someone hiring a mechanical engineer is looking for, I go through three steps. First, I make a list of all the important mechanical engineering skills I need. This list includes things like SOLIDWORKS, 3D printing, GDNT, injection molding, tolerance analysis, etc. Second, I highlight the skills that I know I have. Third, I'll turn each skill into a bullet point that I can add to my resume. For example, you can turn keywords like SOLIDWORKS, injection molding, and DFM into a bullet point by saying, used SOLIDWORKS to design an automotive part to be injection molded at an 8% cost reduction by using DFM methods. As another example, we can also combine fishbone diagram, root cause analysis, and 3D printing into a bullet point by saying, implemented a fishbone diagram to determine the root cause of delayed manufacturing times and 3D printed a jig for a rapid solution. Both examples clearly indicated what, how, and why I did it. I also like to bold keywords once I put them in a bullet point just so I can highlight the most important aspects of my resume. Looking back, I honestly don't know if bolding these keywords in my resume actually helped or not, but I don't know, it just works for me, so I did it. Anyways, looking closer at my resume, let's start off with my experience at Tesla. I talk about the CAD software I used and what types of systems I work with there, specifically interiors. My second point is a little wordy, but I mentioned the types of manufacturing process I had to work with. Injection molding is used to make plastic parts at high volume, whereas sheet metal forming is where you bend a piece of flat metal to get the shape you want. It's usually used to make enclosures like this. Now, in the first two bullet points, I talked about what I did and how I did it. I then move on and talk about the outcome of my work, which was that I was able to reduce costs by 15% by mainly doing two things. First, by adding new attachment features, I was able to reduce cost. I was working on this right after graduating university, so you may be asking yourself, how was I able to do this? Well, I looked at what was used in other cars that had a similar application, and then I implemented that into the particular interior spark that I was working with. Second, complying with DFM and DFA methods always helps in reducing cost. DFM stands for Design for Manufacturing, which means we need to have our parts be really easy to build. Some common rules of thumb that we use to make sure our parts are easy to build is to avoid sharp corners, deep holes, and thin walls. That way our part doesn't get distorted. DFA stands for Design for Assembly. So once you've designed a product in engineering, we call that entire product an assembly. This assembly is made up of several parts and how all these different parts come together needs to be easy and straightforward. Some common rules of thumb we try to implement is to reduce the total number of parts in an assembly or using self-locating features like this. So just for my brief explanation, you can see how using DFM and DFA is really important in making this part actually work and making this part at a low cost. Anyways, moving on to my third bullet point, I mentioned the work I did with 3D printing. The stuff I was printing involved parts that were still in the very early stages and because Tesla is very secretive, 
I really couldn't go into any more detail. And then finally, I talk about my experience using FEA and why it was important, as well as mentioning the fact that I created 2D engineering drawings. Moving on to my next experience, I talk about my use of SOLIDWORKS, power tools, and DFA. Although I mentioned DFA in my Tesla section, I mention it again here because it's pretty important, but I just made sure to add more detail about it. However, I didn't really mention my experience using power tools in my Tesla experience, so I made sure to mention it here. Next, my experience at Validear highlights more skills that I didn't mention in my last two experiences, like root cause analysis and GDNT. I also talk about SOLIDWORKS again here, but I personally chose not to bold it since I already bolded it before and it felt a bit excessive to do it one more time. Now some of my bullet points talk about what I did, how I did it, and the results, while other bullet points only talk about what I did and how I did it without really mentioning the outcome. That's definitely something that I could have improved on, but it's whatever, it's okay because my portfolio definitely made up for it, which I'll share with you a little later in this video. For some context, here where I say improved fixture designs by adding self-locating features, reducing CNC setup times by 15%, you can notice a pattern. First, saying a verb like improved followed by a what statement, then saying by, then adding a how statement followed by a comma and a results statement, that template makes for a pretty good resume bullet point. Moving on to my last two experiences, I use a similar bullet point template as you can see here and here. Fun fact about this bullet point right here in my Ecobee experience, back when I was in my second year of my engineering experience, I had that particular bullet point in my resume and I had applied to a bunch of product manager internship roles at Apple. I was kind of just applying for fun, I didn't really think I was going to get the interview, but to my surprise, I got the first round of interview for a product manager internship position at Apple. And I know for sure that bullet point is what got me the interview because during that interview, I was only asked questions about this bullet point and they were asking me to go into way more detail than I even knew about. Literally for 30 minutes straight, I'm being asked very technical product manager questions about that one bullet point. And this was my first ever Apple interview, so I wasn't really prepared for that level of detail and that level of technical questions. Before that interview, I was just really used to answering questions like tell me about yourself, what's your greatest strength, what's your greatest weakness, tell me about a time you dealt with conflict, stuff like that. So anyway, safe to say I did not get that job, but it kind of goes to show how important every bullet point on your resume is, because really one bullet point is kind of all it takes to help you get your dream interview or your dream job. Next, let's look at my skill section. I divided it into three categories, mechanical, CAD and electrical slash software. I found that worked well for the mechanical design engineering roles I applied to. And honestly, I think my skill section is a bit wordy and I can probably condense it a little bit. For example, I don't really need to say used on various projects involving. Instead, I can just have two separate bullet points listing my skills. Let's move on and talk about my personal projects. This is a small section since it's not as important as my work experience section. The purpose of it for me was just to show that I have a genuine interest in engineering, but I make sure to talk about these projects in a lot more detail in my portfolio. However, if you have very little work experience, then this project section is really important and should be a lot longer for you because what you lack in work experience, you should make up for with your personal projects. Finally, the last section of my resume is the education section. I make sure to only include what's important, like my university, my major, and duration of study. You don't have to add your average if you don't want to, because honestly, most engineering jobs don't really care about grades, as long as you're not completely flunking your classes. Moving on, I always attach my portfolio to my resume, because it's a great place to show my work in a lot more detail. I won't go through the specifics of my portfolio in this video, because I did that in another video. But to quickly summarize, I include about three images of every project that I put in my portfolio. Under each image, I'll have the what, how, and results of that particular project. I also make sure to include at least one image that's of the actual product in real life and at least one image of the product in its CAD software. So to summarize, here are four things to keep in mind. First, for every project on your resume, explain the what, how, and why aspects. Second, start off with keywords, then turn those keywords into bullet points for your resume. Third, make sure to include numbers when talking about the results of the projects you worked on. Fourth, Always attach a portfolio to your resume because it is a great way to show your work and prove that you have the experience and you're not just lying. But that's it, that was my resume. If you like the layout I used here, I'll make sure to link it in the video description. I used Canva to create it and it was pretty cool because Canva's free. Also, if you didn't already know this, you can get Canva Pro, which normally costs like $120 per year, for free if you use this thing called GitHub Student Developer Pack. You basically put in your university email address, 
post a picture of your transcript or student ID, and you get Canva Pro for free for one year, which is pretty cool. Canva Pro has some additional design features compared to the free Canva version. They're not paying me to say this, but I just recently discovered it, so I thought it'd be pretty cool to share. I'll link it in the video description if you're interested. If it doesn't work for you, that's fine. Canva Pro just has some additional features to the free version, but the free version is still enough to make a pretty cool resume. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out my portfolio video where I show you what my portfolio looks like and how to create your own, which is a really important thing to master for engineering jobs because sometimes applying with a resume just isn't enough. Or check out that video where I showed you my resume that got me an engineering job at Tesla. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace! Thank you.